Hello and welcome to Your and Lux first ever YouTube video. My name is Pasha, and in this video, we're going to be checking out how the couple hundred dollars you could spend on a body shop, you could put towards buying your own tools, which you could use later on for other projects, to turn something like this into something like this. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we begin the process, let's go over a few things. You're going to want a high particulate filtering mask and some safety glasses. These are going to help protect your lungs and eyes while you're sanding. The dust created when sanding filler and fiberglass is extremely toxic and dangerous. It would be a shame if your project turns out great, however leaves you with major health issues. It's your responsibility to protect yourself. The two sanders I used are a random orbit sander and a belt sander. I picked up the belt sander for $50 and the orbital sander for $30 at my local Home Depot. They were a great deal and worked perfect for this project. To sum up the sanding bit, you're also going to want to get a handheld manual sanding pad to give you maximum control over your final shape, as well as smoothing the final surface for paint. I also needed to use a small rotary Dremel tool to cut out the shape for the marker light. Last but not least, having compressed air will make your life so much easier when it comes to cleaning your surface as you're sanding. If you do not have access to an air compressor, you can use a fan or a brush to clean the dust away as you sand. The products that I used to reconstruct the fender was Bondo fiberglass resin, Bondo body filler, Bondo glass, and some fiberglass cloth. The only difference between the regular body filler and the Bondo glass is that the Bondo glass is a different color and has small fiberglass strands for added strength, as well as costing about $6 more. Okay, with the basics covered, let's begin. I used a small cup as the crucible while I mixed the resin and hardener together using a brush. I then drenched the fiberglass cloth in the fiberglass mixture to create a sort of band-aid for the fender. I used approximately 20 drops of hardener per one third of the plastic cup filled with resin. With the piece of fiberglass cloth finally completely soaked in resin, it was time to apply it to the fender. I then took the soaked cloth and spaced it in place of the hole. After a bit of nudging and tucking, it took shape and all we had to do was wait for it to harden.
With the fiberglass cloth hardened like a skeleton, we are ready to mix the filler. Be sure to mush around your hardener cream in the tube before you open it to ensure it is properly mixed and the chemicals are not separated. Because this was my first time using body filler, I really overestimated the amount of hardener it takes to create a proper mix. The first bit that I squeezed out would have been plenty for the amount of filler on the table. And now the fun part of mixing. Mix the hardener and the filler together until you have a consistently colored blob without any hardener streaks. Remember, the more hardener you use, the faster the mix will harden. And with that, we are ready to apply. There's not much science to this, just get as much of the mix on there as you can before it hardens. At this point, I realized my blunder as the filler suddenly hardened up on me. That means it's time to sand. Bruh, freaking Ryobi. At this point, just keep repeating the process until the surface is equally smooth. And then finish it off with the manual sander using a fine grid. Once you've smoothed it to your desire, clean the surface and start shaking your rattle can. If you get paint on trim, or in this case a marker light, a little paint thinner and or gasoline on a cloth will clean it right up. Moving on underneath, things got a little tricky, but with patience and some hand twister, we got it to work.
volunteer your hands as a tribunal seat and you'll find the fiberglass set in no time. Here I snip away the awkward outies and place another piece of cloth for a nice consistent edge. And boom. With a little time travel, it's complete. Now let's take a closer look at what we're dealing with and what we're going to mirror. And so it began, starting with this piece. Slowly, piece by piece, the fender began to resurrect. With the fiberglass skeleton complete, the fill and sand process grew the once decrepit fender back to its glory. One last clean and the rattle can appeared.
here is what the end product looks like. I'm gonna get a marker, light. Let's go. Does this one look like? Not bad. There you have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.